you have your Bibles, turn with me to Revelation chapter 18. <clears throat> Folks, we are three-fourths of the way through Revelation. 75% of it is behind us. And uh, really, the what I would call the most exciting, it's all exciting, but the most exciting is the ones that are ahead of us. And I'm still looking forward to chapter 21, 22, uh, 21, 20, no, 19, 20, and 21, and 22. Those are chapters where, man, it's a rolling, and we're going to find out what heaven's going to be like. We're going to find out what we're going to be doing for all of eternity. I had a youth tell me one time, we're going to stay up there that long? <laughs> I'm serious. I was in the youth ministry. And they said, what are we going to do? And here's the one that got me. It's not going to be boring, is it? <laughs> I, you know, I don't slap people, <laughs> but the thought crossed my mind, okay? <laughs> Folks, it'll be perfect, perfect, no temptation, no pain, no sorrow, no cancer. Praise God. I cannot wait to get there. Today, I want to speak to you on the subject that Babylon has fallen, Babylon is falling. And let me give you the outline first. Number one, God judges Babylon, Babylon's demonic nature. You think the demonic nature now is going on? And it is, folks. You know, for, for somebody to get at the end of a parade, a time of celebration, and pull a gun out and start shooting and hitting eight children, there's something demonic about that person. Folks, it's the spirit of the Antichrist that is here. It is here. God judges Babylon's demonic nature. God judges Babylon's sinfulness. Turn the TV on for seven minutes, and you'll see at least three sins in those seven minutes. It's pathetic. I watched a commercial this week where a man was kissing a man. Folks, there's something wrong here. Something's wrong. Romans 1 speaks of that. It's not natural. It's not. Number three, God judges Babylon's pride. And folks, we all have an issue with pride. There's not one person in here that doesn't have to deal with pride sometime in their lives. And so we are going to look at these issues as we study. And remember uh, last week and as we studied the last two weeks, Revelation uh, chapter 7, uh, you know, uh, God judged the religious Babylon, okay, the religious Babylon. And it is the spirit of the Antichrist. It is that thing of worldliness. And he's doing the second part uh, in this particular chapter 18. Throughout history, kingdoms and empires built by proud, arrogant, and God-rejecting rebels have come and gone. The spirit of humanism was first seen in the Tower of Babel. Sinners have no use for God because they live for themselves and do not want anyone telling them what to do or how to live. The truth found in the Word of God is that God will have the last word in human history. Remember, to be a, remember to, to a Christian, history is his story. It's all about God and Jesus. We have seen God's judgments rain down on the earth in the form of seal, trumpet, and bold judgments. The Babylon seen in Revelation 18 is the Antichrist kingdom of worldwide commercial and political activity being destroyed destroyed in the city of Babylon where the Antichrist headquarters are. Let's look at this amazing scripture that describes God's judgment on that city. Remember the Antichrist's goal. We've been saying this for uh, months now. He wants a one world religion. He wants a one world government and a one world currency and he is well on the way of doing that. And we ha as Christians, we have to live under that. We don't have to accept that. We don't have to agree with it. Okay? <clears throat> but this is coming, and, and we know that is true. Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. God judges Babylon's demonic nature. After these things, another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. I want you to see real quickly the three things about this angel. There was the seven angels that brought the judgments. 
But this angel is different because of the way he is described in these, this first verse. I saw an angel coming down from heaven having great authority. Okay, when you think of great authority, it's higher than a regular angel. And I believe this is Michael. All right, the angel Michael, the archangel, and I believe God is sending him down for a special message. Okay, so you see not just authority, great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. So he had to be in the presence of God. To reflect the glory of God, you've got to be in his presence. So it'd be as the night Jesus was born and the angels were there. I'm telling you, they stuck out. It was bright. It was a blinding light. So we see he had great authority. He illuminated God's glory and he cried mightily with a loud voice. There's several times in the book of Revelation you see the word loud voice. Several times. But it doesn't say mightily before. This says mightily with a loud voice, which means God wants everyone on earth to hear what is fixing to be said. So we see this special angel making this announcement from heaven for God. And I am telling you, he is uh, not just doing prophecy. He is making a statement of what is about to happen. All right. Now look at this. Babylon the great is fallen and is fallen and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. <coughs> Excuse me. What does that tell me? If you see that description going on, there is no presence of God in that city. And I call it a city because it says dwelling place. I, I mentioned last week, there are a lot of people that associate the Antichrist with Rome, but I personally don't do that. You, I am not saying I'm right and you're wrong. I believe it could be either one. But as we have looked down through scripture, I have pointed out, I believe there's going to be a rebuilding of Babylon. And I believe that is where the Antichrist is going to rule from. So if God, you know, uh, makes a description like this, then you can see that this is a really, really wicked city that they're just, just, I mean, look at this foul spirit prison. What are prisons for? Think about this. It's where we capture people that have murdered folks, people who have raped folks, people who have done abominable things and all this gathering. All right. In this city, in them under one place. Because we know before, 200 million demons came out of the pits of hell earlier in Revelation. So at the end time, they are all gathering to this place to support the Antichrist. And you know what God's going to do? God's going to destroy every one of them. Isn't it going to be great to know? Folks, we have demonic attacks every day of our lives. I've, I've counseled many a person and they have not realized when they tell me their story, it is demonic in nature. And what I'm saying is it is spiritual warfare. And folks, every day of our lives, Satan shows up. He tempts us. All right. Even I can tell when I'm in the presence of demons there have been times in my ministry, one specifically, that I am not kidding you. I am not making this up. A voice come out of a teenage girl that was just the weirdest thing. And I was counseling her. And I am not kidding. I literally at that time, I was young. I didn't know what I know now. And all I knew to do is pick up my Bible and put my Bible in front of myself. That's how strong that was. You multiply this you know, I can't even tell you how many times that is the spirit of the Antichrist. 
Our world is so evil. But I'm telling you, folks, it's going to be worse. Look at Isaiah 13. Isaiah 13. Again, I, I want to keep going back to the Old Testament and, and looking at these Old Testament prophecies. Isaiah 13. I'll get there. And again, it's proclamation against Babylon. And again, we understand Babylon was one of the seven or, or one of the, the five kingdoms. And, and let me tell you this about empires. All these empires that have, have, have come and gone, folks, they've all been taken over. They've all destroyed. What I'm saying is there's no empire on earth that cannot be defeated. The Romans were defeated and they were one of the most powerful empires there is. Folks, God has an empire and he is going to defeat all of Satan's empires. Verse 6, well for the day of the Lord is at hand. What is wailing? Crying uncontrollably. It will come as destruction from the Almighty. Therefore, all hands will be limp. Every man's heart will melt. I am telling you, when they see Christ, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I do kind of want to get ahead of myself. They are going to fear. There's going to be a fear in their hearts like they have never had. And they will be afraid. Pains and sorrows will take hold of them. They will be in pain as a woman in childbirth. And folks, you know, I, I just thank God that God chose the women and Eve to have babies. Amen. Us men, I don't think we could take it. We are the worst patients there are. Thank God for women. They will be amazed at one another. Their face will be like flames. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel with both wrath and fierce and anger, to lay the, to lay the land desolate. He will destroy it, its sinners from it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations will not give their light. The sun will be darkened in its going forth, and the moon will not cause its light to shine. That was exactly what the fifth bold judgment was was darkness on the face of the earth. I will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for their iniquity. I will halt the arrogance of the proud and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. And I know we as Christians even sometimes wonder, why do these, why do these bad people have a lot of money? Why are they running around in, you know, brand new Cadillac Escalades and they're pushing drugs and they're doing these things? Well, I got news for you, folks. They are going to stand before God, at, you know, it, you know, when they pass away or, or, or when when they die. They've got to stand before God. And I am telling you here in looking at this and looking at Babylon falling, Folks, God is not going to have mercy on their souls. God will judge every one of them and pronounce them. And folks, I know people don't even like to use the word hell, but read Luke chapter 16, folks. Hell is real. And those who do not have Christ in their life are going there according to the word of God. So we see God judges Babylon's demonic nature. And not only that, God judges Babylon's sinfulness. Look at verse 3. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the Antichrist is going to be gathering these nations together. The Antichrist are going to get these ten kingdoms and these ten kings to go against God and Jesus himself. And fornication is, is cheating on God. Okay? And, and folks, we have such a central world. You turn on the TV and you just try to watch football and we got girls out there half-dressed. They give commercials now, and they try to sell things. What do they do? They try to show cleavage of women and, and beautiful women and, and attract that. And folks, that is what he's saying. He is simply saying the world is bad now, but you cannot imagine what it's going to be like then. Drink the wine of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. 
And folks, we will know, and we've already talked about uh, beforehand and, and earlier in Revelation, where it'll get to the point, uh, the Antichrist, where you will have to either take the mark of the beast or not be able to purchase anything. And there are things, and, and I know, folks, it is going to be a hard decision. Thank God I don't think we're going to be here during that time. But even if we are, I am telling you, I will die a Christian martyr before I will, you know, uh, pledge any allegiance to the Antichrist. It's not happening, folks. They're not putting the mark on me. They're still not going to tell me what to do. And I promise you during this time as a Christian, it will cost you your life. So you have to decide, am I going to fall under the Antichrist? Am I going to, you know, take the mark because I want to feed my family? Or, I, or, I'm, or am I going to die for the cause of Christ? Thousands and literally millions of people will sell their soul to the Antichrist. Folks, it'll be a, a terrible, terrible time here. Verse 4, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins. And folks, this same thing is true today. There is sin all around us. And we have to decide what we are going to do. Are we going to try to please others? Or are we going to try to please God? Are we going to walk the straight walk? Are we going to go the narrow way? Or are we going to be like everything else? And folks, the world has got its hook in a lot of people. What used to be something you would not even say out loud now is said on television and is promoted by many people uh, in high places. And folks, we have to understand even, you know, I, I don't believe we're going to be here at this time, but we're living in the day where we have to decide, are we going to be Christians or are we not going to be Christians? Are we going to stand for God or are we not going to stand for God? And you know what some people do? They, they do whoever they are around. Folks, we don't come to church just on Sundays to be a Christian on Sundays. We come to church so that we can be better Christians, that we can be stronger in the Lord, that we can know what God's word and his holy word says. That doesn't mean Monday I take off my pastor's hat, I set it down, and I'm like everybody else. Folks, you don't understand how many people are watching what you say and what you do. And God is telling them, even in this time, the Christians, he's saying those that have, and you have to remember the 144 evangelists, there were three major opportunities to be saved during this time. And you will stick out, I promise you, if you live for Christ there in these days. And it's going to cost them their lives. But God is telling us we need to do the same thing. We don't need to be like everybody else. I don't care what Johnny is doing. It's like my grandpa told me, if Johnny jumps off a cliff, you going to jump off a cliff? Uh, no, Pops, no, nope, I'm not going to do that. Folks, we need to live for God every day of our lives. Now, folks, I'm not talking about sinless perfection. We all sin. We all sin. Hey, say this with me. I'm a sinner. Say it with me. Say it again. I'm a sinner saved by grace. Folks, we're going to mess up. But when we do, we need to do business with God first. First. And then if we've done it around someone, we need to do business with that person. We need to go to them and apologize and say, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? Folks, we've got to live like Christians we are the only Bible some people see. And, and God, that, that voice from heaven is saying, come out of these people. Don't be like them, lest you share in their sins, lest you receive the plagues. What are the plagues? I believe it's the judgments that we have been talking about. 
There are things that happen to Christians because they keep sinning, because they snub their nose at God. I'm not saying if you're sick, that is what's happening. I'm not saying that. I'm simply saying, you know, uh, you know, God looks hard on sin. God doesn't want you to sin. First John 1 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But here he is saying, come out. Verse, verse 5. Matter of fact, Hebrews says, God chastens every Christian that he loves. It's like my dad. I'm just telling you, I didn't get spankings when I was growing up. I got whoopings. I'm serious. You know, and I don't negotiate now. There's no negotiate. I'm not sitting you in a timeout chair. If you sit there, your bottom's going to hurt. You've ever noticed how big our bottoms are? Has anybody ever noticed that? <laughs> I'm serious. Why? The Bible tells us to spare. I mean, don't spare the rod. We, we want to negotiate. I wanted to negotiate with my dad one time. He didn't put me in timeout. He put me in knock me out. <laughs> Literally, he would go to jail today for what he did. I said a word that probably wouldn't even be a cuss word today. And he clocked me right. In, I, it caught me totally off guard. And man, I hit the ground. Last thing I knew, my mom was over me. And I could hear her talking. And she was saying, you killed him. You killed him. <laughs> you know what happened from that day forward? I didn't get within arm's reach of my father. All right. I knew he didn't play. Folks, when God comes to this point, he's not playing. Okay, he will destroy Babylon. He will destroy the spirit of the Antichrist. He will not apologize to anyone about that. Now, li listen, for her sins have reached to heaven. Now, I, I got a pile full of them, folks, but I don't even think mine will get that far. That's how bad the world is going to get. Pile to heaven. And God remembered her iniquities. Well, I've had somebody say when they've read that, well, I thought God forgave us of our iniquities. Well, yeah, if you're a Christian and if you ask for forgiveness of that, he is faithful and just to forgive you. But if you've just been stubborn, stubborn, stubborn your nose at God and, and ignoring him and you live any way you want and it's your life and you do that, folks, you're going to get what's coming. He gives everybody a chance to be saved. And you think with the internet, with television, with all that's going on, the gospel is everywhere. So you can't say, nobody told me. That's what he is saying. When it gets to this time, I am telling you, he is angry. He is mad for killing, for making martyrs of his Christian. He is mad for them taking over and selling people these lies. And, and they just think, hey, uh, you know, you know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, live my life and I'm going to do what I want to do. And if I die, I die. Well, folks, I don't think they understand the word of God. Because this is what it says. James chapter 5. James 5. James chapter 5. Verse 1. Come now, you rich. Weep and howl for your misery that is coming upon you. Folks, let me tell you this. I'm telling you, money cannot buy happiness. I heard somebody say, but it makes you happy in a bigger house. And I said, that's not going to help you at all, folks. Is that not the world's way? That's the world's philosophy. Your riches are corrupt and your garments are moth-eaten. And folks, if you've got money, I, I'm, it's not wrong to have money. It's how you use that money. If you take that tithe and that offering and you give that to God, then how you spend your money is your business. But I'm still saying there are folks that feel like they are above the law because they have money. There are po po people that feel entitled. Man, I, that word just chaps my hide, folks. Entitlement. God doesn't owe you anything, folks. He's given you everything. Everything. 
Your gold and silver are corroded. The corrosion, it will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. I know, I know folks that have trouble sleeping because they're worried about the stock market. They're worried about, I've seen people get off airplanes and the first place they go, not to baggage check, they go to look at a screen to see if they lost any money this day. You have heaped up treasures in the last days. Indeed, the wages of laborers uh, who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud and cry out. The cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath. Even the Bible tells us to give an, a wage earner what he, what he deserves, folks. What it's worth. Okay, and I understand, you know, hourly wage, I understand all that. But it, but I'm telling you, folks, we are a money grubbing. We are a selfish uh, a generation. You have lived on the earth in pleasure and in luxury. You have fat in your hearts as in the day of slaughter. And these ones that have taken the mark of the beast and these ones that have been kings and taken advantages of, of all that had been going on on the earth. Okay, all these uh, things that have happened, uh, you know, the, the places burning up and all these things happening, the floods, they are taking advantage of those things. You have condemned and you have murdered the just. He does not resist you. Now look at verse 7. Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Steve said it right when we started this service. He's coming. He's coming. You better be ready, folks. You better be ready. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth. And I'm telling you, a lot of you, you couldn't be a farmer. Why? Because you got to wait. We don't like to wait on nothing. We don't like to wait in lines. We don't like to wait anywhere. Wait patiently for it until it receives the early and the latter rain. And folks, I believe with all my heart, there's many a Christian that misses God's will for their life because they will not wait. They take it on to themselves. And then they spiritualize. Well, God told me when he, he never told you that. You're doing what you want to do. Verse 8, you also be patient. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do you know how long ago that was written? It's still true. He's coming, folks. He's coming. So God judges Babylon's sinfulness, and God judges Babylon's pride. Look at the last verses. Verse 6, render to her just as, as she re rendered to you, and repay her double according to her works. What is she saying? Folks, you know, in, in the Old Testament, it says an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But the thing you have to remember about vengeance is vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. You should not take vengeance out on anyone. You have to leave it to God. If somebody has done you wrong. I remember when I was young and I was a youth minister and in Lawton and I had a, a shotgun and uh, a friend of mine asked to borrow the gun. And he borrowed it and kept it and kept it and kept it. I asked him once, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to do. And so I, I, I need to I'm hunting some more. I'm doing this. And he was a friend. He went to church with me and I asked him the second time. He said, yeah, yeah, I'm going to give it back to you. And then I never asked him again and I never got the gun back. OK, again, folks, I'm not taking it on myself. Matter of fact, one of my other buddies says, why don't you, why don't you confront him about that? And I'm not going to lose a friendship. And again, I know he had that quality, but he was a good person. My guess is he just wanted my shotgun. <laughs> and I decided in my heart, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do that over a shotgun. And I've seen many a family member and many a friend part ways over money. Repay her double according to her works in the cup which she has mixed. Mix double for her. What is it saying? I'm telling you, you double the punishment. They've had a chance. You've told them all through the book of Revelation. 
God shares the gospel. God tells them, hey, I'm coming. This wrath is coming. A day of the Lord is coming. And it says, in the measure that she glorified herself. Listen to how, and, and folks, this is our world. The measure that she glorified herself. All right? That's one of the things that is in our lives. It's all about me. It's all about me. And lived luxuriously, the same measure, giving her torment and sorrow, for she says in her heart, I sit as a queen, which means I'm up here and everybody else is down here. And I understand even the multimillionaires, that put, I, it's just insane what we are paying baseball and football players. I just wish some of them would take some of that money, and, and, and some of them do give to charities. But folks, I think we could solve a lot of problems if those who have been blessed would turn around and bless others. I said as a queen, and I am no widow, and I will not see sorrow. And, it, and it's not a mark against widows. If you think about it, in the old times, people would go to war. And when they went to war, they would lose their husbands. But up to this point, the Babylonian Empire and, and the Antichrist seemed to be winning all the wars. So they're just basically saying, hey, man, I've got money. My house is doing good. I don't have to worry about death. I don't have to worry about anything. I'm a queen. I'm a queen. It's so funny. <laughs> My granddaughter, Kylie, the other day, she, she won something at school and she was a princess for, for a day or whatever it was. And the, the day I, I was working and the day I came in, Kylie was there and she had a pink dill on. She had a crown on her head and she come in with one of the, what was it thing? You hold a wand or something like that? And she goes, Papa, I am a princess. <laughs> and I said, Kylie, you are my princess. And she bowed down like this and says, yes, I am. <laughs> Folks, there's nothing wrong with that. But to snub people, to act like you're better than someone else, to make people uncomfortable by what they have on or what is going on in their life, folks, it's pride. It's pride. Therefore, her plagues will come in one day. That means quickly, death and mourning and famine. She will be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord who judges her. I'm telling you, Babylon will be destroyed, and Babylon's pride is extremely high. Jeremiah 50. Jeremiah 50. We've, we've got to hurry up. Y'all are listening way too slow. <laughs> Jeremiah, blame it on somebody else, right? Bla Jeremiah 50, 29. Call together the archers against Babylon, who bend the bow, who encamped against it. Let none of them escape. Repay her according to her work, according to all that she has done. For she has been proud against the Lord, against the Holy One of Israel. Therefore her young men shall fall in the streets, and all her men of war shall cut off that day, says the Lord. Behold, I'm against you, O most haughty one, says the Lord of hosts, for your day has come." The time that I will punish you, the most proud shall stumble and fall, and no one will raise them up. I will kindle a fire in his, in his cities, and I will devour all around him. And then the city, sin of pride, Isaiah, Isaiah 14. And folks, this is Lucifer. This is why Satan got kicked out of heaven. Verse 12, how you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down on the ground. You weaken the nations. You have said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. Notice here, five eyes. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the people. I will be like the most high, yet you shall be brought down to Shalom. Folks, I'm telling you, Satan is in hell. Satan will spend an eternity in hell because of pride. 2 Corinthians 6. And I close with these last two scriptures. Folks, how does it apply to us today? Here it is. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. 
Folks, when you're considering marriage, listen, only date Christians. Because you, you, I just cannot tell you how much problems there are when a lost person marries a saved person. And what communion has light with darkness? According with what accord has Christ and Bell? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. I will dwell with them. I will walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Look at verse 17 and 18. Therefore, come out from among them. Be ye separate. Folks, don't be like everyone else. Do not touch what is unclean. I will receive you. I will be a father to you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord God Almighty. I can, I can get you one question that will solve all your decision-making process. One question. What would Jesus do? Would Jesus go to that place or that establishment? Would that come out of Jesus' mouth? Would, you, would Jesus do this in front of, uh, front of folks? Folks, what would Jesus do? And the last one, 1 John. 1 John. And folks, this is where we live. 1 John 2.15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Folks, we, we've, got, we've got to decide. Are we going to love God or are we going to love the world? we got to decide. And folks, I made that decision. I was 22 years old. And I have messed up. I have sinned. But I'm telling you, in my heart of hearts, I want to please God in everything I do and everything I say. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, that's sex, the lust of the eyes, which is envy, and the pride of life, and we know what pride is, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Folks, Babylon's going to be destroyed. And we need to do our part in taking down the world right now. Again, folks, we need to be testimonies for Jesus Christ. I want to ask you in closing, if you were on trial for being a Christian, would you be convicted of that? I want to say it again. If you were on trial for being a Christian these days, would you be convicted of that? Father, thank you for this day. And God, I thank you for your, world, your word. And God, I thank you that, Lord, we don't have to go through this but God, it is a warning. It is a warning. God, I pray that we would look at our own lives. God, we want to blame everybody. We want to blame our parents. We want to blame teachers. We want to blame our upbringing or what we have or what we didn't have. And God, the bottom line is everybody has to make their own choice. And God, I pray that we would choose Jesus God, I pray that we would come out from the world. I pray that we wouldn't be like everybody else. God, I pray that we would be Christians everywhere we go. God, I pray if there's Christians here today that need to rededicate their life or maybe they just need to come for prayer. Maybe they just need to hit these altars here and just say, God, I need to do better. God, we all have pride. And God, I pray today some folks would swallow their pride and they would come down and either pray or let us pray with them. God, today could be a turning point in their lives. Today could be a moment where everything would change. That light would shine and God, that they could have victory over sin. And God, if there's one here today that doesn't know you, they've never accepted Jesus Christ, God, I testify, I, I admonish them, I beg them to come, come to Christ today before it's too late. Others may want to come through baptism or be baptized, and others may want to just join the church. God, this is your invitation. This is your time. You do with it what you choose. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Would you stand to your feet?
If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come? 